One of the things I often hear from people is the phrase, we were happily married and then she changed or he changed. I mean, I'm not the one that changed. And so I can't be married to this person anymore. I'm still the same person I was when we got married. And then to you, I will say, shame on you. Shame on you, not because of what you're saying about them, but if you have been married 5, 10, 15, 40 years and you haven't changed, you're the one with the problem. Remember, as we grow and mature, we are supposed to change. I am supposed to be a better woman today than I was yesterday. And Lord help me, I'm definitely supposed to be a better woman than I was when I married my husband 40 plus years ago. I know what a lot of us is referring to is I, I, things were working. It was homeostasis. But what happens often is that two people get together and they were both nominal Christians or not Christians at all, or just not even practicing, or they were both Christians and maybe both devout and one became Catholic, or they were both Catholic and then one of them started understanding the truths of the Catholic faith that they didn't understand before, such as uh, one of the biggest things I hear from people is how we, what we do and don't do in the marital bed. Many people used to do things that the church has always for 2,000 years taught against. And then they realize, and then often it's females in this case, and the men are like, wait, what? You've always done fill in the blank, and now you can't do that? Change is painful. Change is difficult for both people, for the person changing and for the person that has to witness it. Because again, I find this, especially when you think about aging, you get used to your life. Okay, now I'm in my 40s and I can do this and I figure out this is how life works. And then something happens. You get an allergy or you wake up or someone moves out or menopause. or And then you got to redo everything. A dear friend of mine said her mother said that getting older is like a re-education. That's the truth, man. But that's what life is like. And I'm going to talk a little bit about marriage, but this is really for all of us. But I suppose marriage is the time when we express this the most. I was always happy with you. We always did this on Fridays. We always went to the concert. We always did that. And now you want to go to church so much. And now you want to hang out with your church friends and you're and you're doing adoration all the time and, and we're not doing the stuff we used to do and we're not hanging out and you and God is you oh God's getting all your time. I do have to talk with both people in that situation. Because the one that's giving his or her entire life to God, I do have to remind them that your vocation is marriage. And just because it's a God thing doesn't mean it's a good thing for you at this time. But it does create this tension that a husband and a wife will feel because one will move ahead and then the other one's like behind and they need to follow and they don't want to follow or they're not ready. Or the one that's ahead will pressure the one that's behind. And when I say ahead, ahead in growth or ahead in growth in their faith. And then the one that's behind either feels like, I'm not doing that because you're telling me to, or uh, they just watch as their spouse changes, and they don't like it. This does happen every day. But I want, if there's any point to this video, it's to say change will always happen, and it will be painful sometimes and uncomfortable. Because especially if the two shall be as one, and you guys are attached, and one is pulling or growing at a pace faster than the other, it's going to start tearing at you. But don't use the excuse that I haven't changed. Because if you are inclined to say that, what I'd like you to do is say, well, then maybe I'm part of the problem. Maybe my pride is keeping me from changing. Maybe my fear of change 
is keeping me from changing. Maybe my lack of understanding of where you are is keeping me from at least looking or talking or wanting to be there too. Or maybe you're going in the wrong direction. Maybe you're changing in a way you shouldn't. But don't ever allow yourself to be okay with not changing. Ask God, what am I to do? Is this change good? Am I to change too? And of course, we've got all these gender concerns as well, because a husband is to lead his wife. Oftentimes, we'll see the woman coming to faith faster than the husband. And well, that's uncomfortable for a man who's supposed to lead you and not follow you. But the Bible does talk about, for women, don't harp on your men. Just be holy. Be attractive. I was just reading in 1 Peter today, adorn yourself, but not necessarily with ribbons in your hair. Basically, I think it said braids in your hair and colors on your face. But adorn yourself with the beauty of your character so that your husband seeing your beauty basically would say will want it didn't say follow you but it will it will bless him it'll draw you guys closer it'll make him closer to god by witnessing how you live your life you don't boss him you don't tell him what to do you never become the leader but remember, if the man is the head and the woman is the neck, you can turn him in the direction he needs to go and just pray to the Lord that he goes that direction and leads the rest of you there. But it, if it is you, the man, who is changing, you too be patient with your wife and don't force, don't poke, don't be impatient, don't be arrogant. Oh, I'm the holier one. I've seen that too. I can't believe my wife isn't doing that. Oh, I'm doing this. Give it to the Lord. Ask him how you can best lead her in the direction that you've gone, that you've changed into, that you've become. How can you lead her into that change as well? I think you've probably found yourself in here someplace. This is something I see a lot. Are you the one that's changed first or are you the one that's resisted change? You need help changing? You need help recognizing that? Look me up. I'd love to help. My email is christine at breakfastwithbacon.com. My website is breakfastwithbacon.com. Everything's spelled out. It's also Dr. Christine Bacon, but it's probably easier to remember breakfast with bacon. I just want to save a million marriages before I die, which really has morphed into I want to save a million souls. Because often if we save our marriages, we're saving our souls because marriage is all about God. I'm Dr. Christine Bacon. Thanks for watching this informational bacon bit. And remember always to live your life sunny side up.